Welcome to a new episode of my Linux driver tutorial. Today I will show you how to write a device tree driver for an I2C device. And as always I will develop and test my Linux kernel module or my driver on this Raspberry Pi here. But today I have connected this 8-bit Atmega microcontroller to my Raspberry Pi over the I2C interface. And this is because I will use this microcontroller as an I2C slave. So I've written a small program which I will put into my Git repository and I will link, put the link in the description as well. And so this device here acts as an I2C slave. So now if I use I2C detect to check which I2C devices are connected to my I2C bus number one, I see I have a device here at address 10 hexadecimal or 16 decimal. And this is my um, microcontroller here. So I have connected this adjustable resistor to an ADC pin of my microcontroller. And if I do an I2C read access, I can read out the current value of my ADC pin. So if I do an I2C get, I want to read from bus 1, I want to read from device 10 hexadecimal. I will get the value 90 back and if I change the adjustable resistor with my screw, screwdriver here and do another read you can see the value has changed. Okay great. And you can see this LED here which is toggling with a, in a fixed interval and this is because every time I read out the ADC I toggle my LED. And you can adjust the time um, between two ADC reads. So if I do an I2C write access to my slave here, so I will use I2C set, I want to write to bus 1, address is hexadecimal 10 again, and now I can set the interval in 10 milliseconds. So if I write a 1 to it, now the ADC value is read out every 10 milliseconds. If I write 100 to it, it will only be read out every second. So, but I will set this to 15, so it will be read out every 500 milliseconds, which is okay for me now. So this is a very simple and small ice cross device. And today I want to write a small device driver for it by using the device tree. Okay, so let me go into my Linux driver tutorials folder. Here you can see all the episodes I've already done and I will use this kernel module as a template for our new kernel module. So I will copy this 21 to 22 device tree i 2 c and I will change into it. If I do an ls we can see what's inside of the folder here. So here is the source code for our Linux driver. Here we have a makefile for our Linux driver and here we have a device tree overlay where we can add the device to the, the I2C device to the device tree. Okay, so first thing I will do is I will change the name of dtgpo to dti2c.c and I have to change this in the make file as well. So this will be I2C here. Okay, now let's open up um, the device tree overlay because we have to made, make some changes here too. So the first thing we will do now, the target path is not the root path here, but we will change this to we'll change this to um, I square C1. So what we're doing now is we're adding a device to the I square C bus number one. Okay, and here in the overlay we have to specify the format of the addresses we give. So I have to set address cells to 1 and I will set size cells to 0. Okay, and now I can add my device. I will call it my ADC and here is already the address, so it's at the I2C address 10 here. Here we have our compatible string. Let me change this to bright light my ADC here. I can delete these three properties here. And now let's add a new property, which I will call rec for the register address. 
and this is of course 10 again hexadecimal 10. Okay, so this is the overlay for our simple um, Atmega ADC. Okay, so now let me try to build the device tree overlay. Okay, it worked. Now here, this file is our compiled device tree overlay. Okay, so now let's take a look at the Linux driver source code here. So this is um, an example for a device tree um, driver for a GPIO device. So the first thing I will do is I will do a little cleanup here. So I will delete some. Um, I will delete everything I don't need for this module here. Okay, so these five includes are not needed any longer. Okay, I will change these two functions too. So let me delete them. Okay, this will. Okay, we don't need a GPO variable here. Okay, we will need a procfs write callback because it will create a procfs file to get the current value of the ADC. So let's only delete seven lines here. This is okay too. So from the probe function, I will delete most of it, but only but not the part where I'm creating the um, procfs file. Okay, so 16 lines here. Okay, I will only need the procfs file here. Yeah, here I can delete everything but where I'm removing the procfs file. Okay, so this should be a good base for our new kernel module. Okay, so the first thing I will do is I will add a new include file and I will include linux slash i square c dot h. Then I will adjust the module description to a driver for my simple Mega I square C ADC. Okay. And then I will create a new variable. Static struct from the type I square C client. ADC client and I will call it ADC client. So this pointer will, um, over this pointer I can access the device here. Okay, cool. So the next thing I need is I have to declare the probe and remove function. So for i square c devices, um, they look like this. So the return type is integer, and I will call it my ADC probe as arguments. I have to pass a struct from the type i square c client client and a construct from the type um, i square c device id um, id okay and for the remove function it's quite similar but here we only ha have one argument so i can de delete the last one here okay so the next thing here, the, um, this is the same like in the GPIO driver. So here we have a list of compatible devices. And I want to be compatible with Brightlet My ADC. This is exactly the compatible string um, which I have written into the device file overlay. Okay, so I can leave this mostly same. And now, because this is an i 2 c device, I have to add a struct from the type i square c device id and I will call it my adc here. Okay, and here I have to specify the devices with which I want to be compatible to. So this is it. And now I will use this function, module device table, but this time I make it known to i square c. And I will call it, oh, I forgot a space here. And here I'm passing my my ADC here. Okay, so for example, if I have multiple i square c devices, this driver is compatible with, I could add them just here. Okay, and down here, 
we are creating our driver instance and this is now from the type i square c driver the probe function has the name my adc probe now the remove function has the name my adc remove then i will add the id table which will be my adc here and the name will be my adc and this is okay cool okay so now in the next step we can implement the probe and remove function so let me copy them here so here we are okay So the first thing I will do here is I will do a print to the kernel slug. Um, now I am in the probe function, just as a small hint for me. Then I will check. Then I will check the address. So here in the client, um, here in the client struct we have a field called address and this should give us the i square c address and in case the address is not equal to 10 an error occurred so wrong i square c address and i will return with minus one here okay and then here i will create a procfs file and i will call it um, my ADC. Okay, and here dt i square c. I have a typo up here and here. Let me fix it. Yeah. Okay. And one important thing is I need, I have to initialize my ADC client. I will set to um, client. So this, I need this because I want to be able to access the um, I2C device here in my procfs functions. Okay, so much for the init function. The remove function is easier. So this is just the removing of the um, procfs file and I will print here now I am in the remove function. Okay, great. Okay, so now let's implement the um, procfs callbacks. So let me copy these seven lines here. Mm -hmm. Read ADC value. This will be my read and now the user buffer is not at const any longer. Okay, so when I do a reading, I have to I can use the i square csm bus read byte function here. So I want to read from ADC client and I will store the result in my ADC variable here. And then I can use sprintf. So user buffer. And let's write the ADC value in here and I will return this because this is the number of bytes. So because sprintf will return the number of bytes from the string here and that's exactly what we need to return here. Okay, so the write function will be a little bit different. So I will create a new, okay, um, well, a new variable called value. I will use um, string too long to um, convert the string into a long integer and then I will do an i square csm bus write byte c client and I will write I will cast the long to an 8-bit integer here yeah and that's it so here with the write we're updating the um, Timing between two ADC reads. Timing between two ADC reads. Okay, great. 
And now, of course, I have to add this read fun callback to my um, file operations. So read will be my read. Okay. And now I will do something I have never done in the Linux kernel module. I will actually delete the init and the exit function. And instead of these two functions, I will use module i square c driver and I will pass my driver here. Because what this does is the following. With this function, this will create automatically my i square c or my init and exit function. So what this will do is it will um, it will create a new i2c adapter to access the i2c bus and it will re register our um, i2c driver. And in the remove function it will free our driver and it will um, free the adapter as well. So this is very cool. And let me type a comment here. This will create the init and exit function automatic, automatically. Okay, cool. Okay, so that should be it. Here I have... So let me try to compile it. And let's see how much mistakes I've made. <laughs> okay, so let's run make. Okay. Okay, but the, okay, I have a warning here. Return value. Oh yeah. So let me resolve this warning. It's not too important, but only if this here returns zero, the conversion worked, and only then we should um, we should yeah we should write the value out. So, yeah, so let's do it again. Okay, now I don't have any, um, any warnings. So, okay, so the first thing we have to do is we have to load our device tree overlay. Okay, done. And now we can insert our Linux kernel module. So let's insert the ti2c.ko. Okay, let's look at the kernel log if everything went correctly. Okay, we were in the probe function and at, in the procfs we should have the file myadc. Okay, so now let's read it. Uh, yeah, I only want to read one line here. Okay, so this is the current value. Let me change the value with my screwdriver here. Yeah, so reading works fine. Now let's try writing okay so now the led should blink quite fast yeah so now the up well is updated every second or every 10 milliseconds okay yeah so writing worked as well okay so that's how to write a very simple and easy i square c driver for an i2c device with edit over the device tree. So I guess that's it for today. I hope you, you've learned something and you've enjoyed the video. If you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com slash Johannes for Linux. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching and goodbye.